Uh, so now uh, I want to get into the primary source of information that you'll need in order to apply for for a statewide park program grant, and that is the application guide. So for round four, use the application guide dated July 1st, 2020 to prepare your application. There were some minor technical updates to the January 22nd, 2019 application guide that was used for round three. These updates that were effective July 1st of this year were for program administration items such as the amount available for this round and the change in the grant performance period. The changes can be found in the application guide updates document on the statewide park program webpage. So Sam, can we please uh, start delving into the application guide and turn to page three, please, to the table of contents. Thank you, sir. So here you'll notice that there are four color-coded sections. And so the first section we're gonna be going through uh, is the program overview section. And that deals with the intended legacy of the statewide park program through both Proposition 84 as well as Proposition 68. And then we'll end that uh, section uh, talking about the application process as well as the grant administration process. Now, section two is the section that I like to call the uh, meat and potatoes of the, of the application guide. These 15 items under section two are what you're going to submit to, to us uh, by December 14th, 2020. And this all will consist of your, your entire application package. Section three uh, deals with eligible costs for the acquisition, pre-construction, and construction of, of a project. So when you are developing and planning your project, be sure that you currently uh, review the eligible cost charts uh, on pages 52 through 54, and, and also the, the ineligible costs on page 55. These will help guide you in knowing what exactly is eligible for reimbursement under the statewide park program. Finally, section four are the appendices. This is a very helpful section as you'll see and you'll hear a lot about today when we start going through our nine criteria in a little bit. That beginning on page 57, there is project selection criteria guidance. So when you, when you start looking at the criteria and you have a question, you could always go back to the to this criteria guidance section and you'll be able to uh, have some have some uh, have some information more information about what we what we're looking for in the criteria and then finally as we're going through the guide you'll notice that there are going to be words and terms in small caps what this means is that every time you see a word or term in small caps is that they are defined and those definitions can be found beginning on page 70. So can we please, oh, and also, uh, so you notice the colored coded bands on the table of contents. Now, if you go and quickly do a quick flip through your guide, you'll notice each header, uh, the header on, on each page will have a color coded section. So that way it'll better help or orientate you to where you are within the guide in relation to the table of contents. So with that, can we, Go to page four, please, Sam. Thank you, sir. So uh, we've uh, so now I'm going to uh, have you focus in the middle of the page to the eligible applicants. Applicants that are eligible to apply for this program are cities, counties, districts, as defined on page seventy-one, which as which is which is the uh, the definition section. Uh, joint powers authorities. One member of that joint powers authority must be an eligible applicant. So that would mean they would have to either be an eligible district, city, or county. Also eligible are nonprofits with 501c3 status. The types of projects you can come in for are either development or a combination project, which is known as an acquisition and development. And these can either create a new park, expand an existing park, or renovate an existing park. Can we go to page five, please, Sam.
Okay, so uh, uh, page five is is a, a wide is, is a list of a wide range of eligible recreation features. A project must include at least one recreation feature to be eligible. It cannot be all support amenities like restrooms and parking lots. Those amenities are eligible. However, the focus of the project must be for a recreation feature. So go ahead and take a couple seconds to kind of look through this list. There is a wide range of recreation features that are eligible. Okay, can we please go to page six, Sam? Okay, so page six, uh, the top part I'm going to talk about quickly is the, uh, these are examples of major support amenities. So what I really want to call attention to are the two paragraphs just below the three bullets. So one, keep in mind that, a, that an application that comes in where a majority of total project costs are for one of the, one of the major support amenities listed above uh, will be less competitive. So keep in mind that a majority of your cost should be for a recreation feature uh, that, it, that was previously listed on page, page five. And finally, another very important point to, here is that an application that is solely for major support amenities is, are, is, is, will be considered ineligible. So keep in mind uh, the, the major thrust of this program is to develop at least one recreation feature. So with that, I will turn it over to Natalie and she will go over the rest of this section for you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Rich. So continuing on page six, in the middle of the page, you'll see the grant amount for application. It is $8.5 million is the maximum request per application. Each park requ requires a separate application. However, there's no limit to the number of applications that an entity can apply for. And then everyone's favorite part is down at the bottom of the page. There is no match requirement for this program. So the grant by itself may fund the entire project. Okay, so now we're gonna turn to page seven. And at the top, we'll just review the chart. And just to repeat, this is uh, this round of $395.3 million is the final round of Prop 68 statewide park program. And we call this the 2020 round, also call it round four. So it's the second part of that box. Just to point out again, the grant performance period is July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2025. And it's important to note the grant performance period because that represents when costs are eligible for reimbursement should your grant be selected for funding. Okay, and then there's a note right underneath the chart about $134 million uh, about $134,125 uh, uh, was to be set aside to fund existing parks. That amount has been met through round three. However, existing parks are still eligible for round four. And then if you see below the application process at the bottom of page seven, just a quick reminder to please use that competitive chart at our program's website as a planning tool for you while you're planning your project. And then we're gonna turn to page eight and cover a, a few more key points about the application process. Number five and six at the top. So uh, number five, Noel will get into this about how to submit your application. It's actually an online submittal. Uh, process we're going to have this time around. The application deadline is December 14th, 2020. And then number six is important because if you've never applied for a grant with our office before, you may not know how, uh, how we work. So basically, when you submit your application by December 14th, 2020, if you have an item that is missing, um, such as uh, possibly a resolution, uh, we do not kick out your project for missing um, checklist items. 
we will work with you in order to get those forms committed or revised if something was um, it was in error. But the exception to that rule is the bullet point under number six. So the project selection criteria that we're going to cover in just a few minutes is the actual scored um, component to this application package. So the project selection criteria responses have to be submitted by December 14, 2020, and no revisions will be accepted. But again, for the rest of the application checklist items that we'll cover today, we will work with you um, to make sure that those get completed. So now if you are one of the projects that is selected for funding, you would then go into our grant administration process. And we do have a whole nother guide um, on the grant administration process, but this is just an overview here. So I'm gonna quickly point out number six through four here in the middle of page eight. Again, wanna stress the grant performance period is July 1st, 2020 and ends June 30th, 2025. But as Victor mentioned earlier this morning, that your target completion date is March of 2025. And the reason for that is explained in number six here on your page. It really gives uh, you time and us time um, to review your final payment request documents that you submit to us in March of 2025. And if you complete your project before March of 2025, of course, you don't have to wait to submit your documents. But that's the end, you know, the end time frame that we can accept a project to be complete is March of 2025. So it gives us time to review your payment documents, also come out to your site and do a final site inspection, and then come back to our office and process the final payment request through the state controller's office before the funds liquidate on June 30th, 2025. So again, your target completion date is no later than March of 2025. So before I turn it over to Noel to continue our webinar, Victor, I want to um, toss it over to you to see if there's anything in the chat that you would like to bring up at this time. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Natalie. So we, we did receive a few questions about new parks. Uh, the first question is, uh, why are new parks a priority? And um, it, it is because that the um, greatest efficiency is that there are uh, communities in California that have uh, no park at all. Uh, however, um, the program also does fund park expansions and park renovations. Uh, there could be a balance again this round uh, as there were in previous rounds. Um, the uh, Prop 68 Bond Act set aside about 20% uh, of the funds for uh, existing parks and um, that was already met in the prior round. So it is theoretically possible that all the projects in this next round would be new parks. However, um, that's also going to be based on the competition. Um, there's not enough um, really solid new park proposals that meet the highest intent of the program. Of course, um, there will be renovations and expansion projects funded as well. So it really depends on the competition. Um, the second question is what qualifies as a new park? And we will cover that under project selection criteria number three in a few minutes. Th thank you. All right, thanks, Victor. So now I'm turning it over to Noel to continue with the application package. 